Hi. So this is a video where we're going to uh, be going through combinatorics worksheet three and uh, in an effort to try to uh, efficiently review for our last assessment of the semester before the exam. Um, I'm going to be going through questions one through 20, hopefully probably doing this in four parts so they're not too lengthy. We're going to do exercises one through five here and uh, I would suggest you have your copy ready. I'm not going to be writing any of the problems on the board. Also, I'm not going to be doing any of the calculations either. So I'll leave the button mashing to you uh, in your own good time. So jumping right in to question number one, which asks us a, a 10 sided die and a 12 sided die are each rolled and the results are added together. And how many ways can the resulting sum be a 15? So we're going to be rolling a 10 sider and a 12-sider. So remember that each of these respectively has that numbers uh, listed on its side. So we have 1 through 10, 1 through 12. We're going to be looking for a sum equal to 15. Now this is one of the two examples we wrote down as we wrote our flow chart about counting, when to do what. Uh, this is an instance where we simply can't get around listing. There's not a more efficient technique to do it. So uh, we're just gonna have to do a list and we're going to do it systematically, make sure that we don't miss anything. So let's just think for a second about how to begin. I don't want to, for instance, jump in and say, hey, I could get a seven and an eight giving me a sum of 15. If I start with that and sort of jump all over the place, I might end up miss, uh, missing some uh, possible combinations. So I don't wanna do that. Instead, I'm gonna pick maybe either the lowest possible 10-sided outcome or the highest possible. Now I wanna make sure that I can still get a 15 if I uh, only have a 12 to supplement it. So let's say on one hand I decide to start with uh, getting a one. If I get a one here to get a 15, I need to get 14, which is not possible on a 12-sided die. So going this route is probably not gonna be the most uh, efficient way to do it. Of course, you could just keep eliminating impossible combinations until you find something, but you might first try to go the other way, start with 10 and uh, see if I get something that is possible to pair with 10 and get a sum of 15, and I do. So 10, five works. Now what I wanna do is keep listing, getting smaller here and getting larger here, still getting a sum of 15. After we get this, this all starts to become pretty mechanical. Uh, I just don't wanna get carried away and start putting down things that aren't possible. I also wanna remember that eight, seven is different and unique from getting seven, eight. So uh, to continue, 10, 9, 8, 7, I could get a 6 and a 9. I could get a 5 and a 10, which I already got the other way. As you get kind of halfway through the list, you might start to see some mirroring happening. And you're like, okay, I know I'm going on the right way here. Now I get a 4 and 11. I want to be mindful of the fact that once I hit 12, I can't get a 13 on this 12-sided die. So I don't want to say 2 and 13. Uh, I am now done. I have how many outcomes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight outcomes that work. Good? Great. Number two. This is where we're talking about Mr. Wells' students are participating in tornado drill, where they're going to line up side by side on the same wall. My class has 15 students. How many arrangements are possible? Well, on one hand, we could think old school. I think I have 15 there. Yeah. And we could say, well, if I start asking myself questions, do I have uniformity? Yeah, the number of the person that I put here won't affect anything happening later. I'll be left with a predictable number of objects to arrange later. So uniformity, yes, which is usually the case. Unlike this problem, which was not uniform. So uniformity, yes. Next, repetition. Am I allowed to repeat objects? No, I can't put the same person both here and here, so I won't be repeating anything. Thirdly, uh, is the order that I put things in important? Yeah, because I'm talking about arrangement. I'm arranging these students on the wall. Arrangement's a key word for uh, order being important. So in one way, we could write out all of this. Okay, so there would be a bunch of different ways I could do it. So probably most efficiently written is 15 factorial. If I really, 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 really wanted to, I could think about this as uh, 15 P15. But if you remember as we made the flow chart, 
We had those three essential questions that I uh, already mentioned, but there was that fourth auxiliary question. Am I arranging all of the objects in a set? If I am, a factorial is a fine way to go. If I, uh, I'm not, I need to use a permutation. But even if I am, I can still use the permutation. Okay? Good. Number three, number three, number three. So, this says that the Russian alphabet has 32 letters. If we made an ID code out of three Russian letters and four traditional digits and we're not allowed to repeat the digits, how many ID codes are possible? Now, this problem we saw on worksheet two, and we made a big assumption. We made the assumption that, well, I guess the letters come first and the digits come second, okay? Uh, and to be honest, as I read this problem out, out loud with period three a couple days ago, um, I looked at it and I noticed that and I'm like, hmm, well, maybe we can have some fun and say, let's throw that restriction out the window. And we came up with something that um, seemingly made sense, made sense to me in the moment, but um, honestly bothered me through the rest of the day. And I kept thinking about it and then I just kind of started experimenting with it. Um, and I found that period three, unfortunately, and period five, period seven, you didn't get to have that experience. This answer, This answer is not accurate. Um, and the problem, we saw, this was fine. The problem's right there. This is not a uh, legit way for us to find these uh, letters. Now, I've been thinking about this. This is a really good problem. Um, I was uh, messing around with it for quite a while. And uh, I am almost to what I think is a good way to explain the solution. Um, but this is going to be far outside of bounds for both your experience Tuesday and I would say that uh, the exam as well. So let's operate under that original assumption that uh, we're going to have letters first followed by digits. We are allowed to repeat letters and we are not allowed to repeat digits. In that case, the original uh, solution that we had on worksheet two would have been fine, which was uh, 32 cubed times 10, times 9, times 8, times 7, where we can repeat letters and we don't repeat digits. This could perhaps more efficiently be written as 32 cubed times 10 uh, P4. So perhaps in the future we'll revisit this, probably after the holiday because we have other business that's a little more pressing as the semester concludes. But um, all the same, it's been a uh, fun problem for me to work on on my own. So far I've got it to about uh, a little over a billion possible ID codes. Um, not quite done eliminating everything yet. So let's look at number four. A class of 20 students is going to choose a committee of seven consisting of a chairman, a vice chairman, a secretary, and four other members, maybe four just representatives. Uh, and in how many ways can this committee, committee be created? So we've seen that when we're choosing committee peoples, um, if we assign them a position, like an officer, chair, vice chair, bailiff, sergeant at arms, whatever, um, then we want to imply that the order of choosing people is important. Like we've seen numerous times, if I have the same three people, I say president, vice president, chairman, that's different than me saying president, vice president, chairman, in the reverse order with the people. So uh, we want to make sure we take that into account. And we're going to go ahead and say that out of 20 students, we need seven total on the committee. We have one, two, three officers. So from 20 in order, I'm going to take three. Now I need four more, and these are just the reps, the other committee members that it, I can't tell the difference between. I've already chosen three out of the 20, so I only have 17 people left. And I need to take four of them to fill out the seven person committee, but I don't care what order they come in. Number five, how many three-letter words can be made from F, G, H, I, J, K if the letters cannot be repeated? So, five, we're going to be thinking about from a set of six things, F, G, H, I, J, K. From six things, we want to choose three. We're making anagrams or words, uh, so we want the order to matter. And uh, we're not going to repeat anything, so we're definitely using a permutation. Okay. 
So that's exercises one through five. Stay tuned for six through 11. Maybe we'll just stop at 10.